G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so Monday morning here in Australia, obviously Sunday over in the States. Uh, and you know, all the talk about the bloody Sunday that was coming up uh, hasn't really eventuated yet. Now look, Sunday's not over, so it definitely still could occur. And maybe it's going to come on the Monday, if it's going to come at all. Again, uh, you know, maybe we have bottomed out and we've seen the bottom. No one knows for sure, but... At the moment, you know, the bloody Sunday sort of hasn't occurred yet. But we can see the market is up around about 4.8%. BTC dominance dropped a little bit, so it was 42%, I think. So now it's 41%, almost 42%, though. ETH dominance down a little bit, 17.5%. And gas are quite cheap at the moment. Now, look, we can see basically a bit of a recovery. Most things are looking pretty green within the last 24 hours and over the last seven days. You know, again, a bit of a mixed bag sort of here and there. Generally, just it, it literally does feel like we're now in a consolidation period. But, you know, no guarantees. That's not financial advice. Things can turn on a dime uh, at any moment in crypto and markets in general. And particularly in crypto, whenever you think you've got it figured out, then it'll just do something to completely prove that you don't know what you're talking about at times. And look. I'm not too, too uh, ashamed to admit that there's definitely times I have been completely wrong. And then I'll be wrong again. All right, anyway, let's have a look. All right, what's done well in the last 24 hours? Because there seems to be a lot of green. We can see Cardano, I mean, is up 15%. So that's doing well. All right, the graph has had a strong recovery. So 24% over the last 24 hours. So nice. Nia is up nearly 20%. Compound, Engine Coin had a good rebound. Nice. Uh, Terra Luna, nice. That really got hammered. Uh, I bought some Terra Luna a few days ago and I, I am down. But look, it's down. Oh, it's nearly a 3x from its old all-time high. So that's why I jumped in. Uh, I just thought that's too good a price for, uh, you know, at least what has been touted as a quality project. I don't know a whole lot about Terra Luna. I know a little bit. Uh, it's a DeFi project. A lot of people have been talking about it and it's had some hype. So I just thought, you know, I'll put a few dollars on it. And if I'm wrong, then so be it. But if I'm right, I basically triple my money. Uh, Telecoin, as we can see, Cardano, Uniswap, Harmony, Amp, Thorchain, Aave. Look, basically everything is near double digit gains. Now, I'm sure there's going to be some losses, but things are looking pretty good. So let's have a look. Has anything been really hammered? Has anything not fared well? Well, there we go. Horizon had a bit of a pullback, but still up for seven days. Same as Helium. Huobi token, and then really. So there's only, you know, three projects that are in the red within the top 100 in the last 24 hours. And then we're just getting into the stable coins, which can be up or down, you know, just under a percent or you know 0 0.1 0 0.2 of a percent on average for them so not too bad but again tomorrow is a public holiday so people were expecting you know today to be the worst day the sunday the bloody sunday uh sell-off is you know what it was being touted as uh now look it could be monday so maybe tomorrow that's going to happen but let's move on and have a look at the chart so again this is that uh corridor that we've been kind of traveling in and again, as you can see, we're just we're holding tight at the moment. So have we dipped down outside of this? Yep, but we're holding tight inside. And again, we just got we, we were overextended, and I said this before. We travelled way up above. So the reason it's hurt so much because we've been up the top of the channel before, but then again we travelled sideways for months uh, and ended up at the bottom of the channel. And no one really felt that though. It was all just kind of boring oh yeah bitcoin it's traveling at you know ten thousand dollars it's been doing it for months not overly exciting but then it got up in its big run and it's just because it did this uh, very sharp and steep drop off but what i wanted to show you is look things like this have happened before though so let's go here and what i wanted to show you is that this is the channel uh that it was in and we can see that it broke down outside of this channel here. So that technically could have been really, really bearish. And this was basically when the bottom was in. And look at that. Pumped right up. And so that would have really scared people out. And it dropped outside of the channel. But then it got back up inside of the channel. And just travelled along the bottom of the channel. Before it made this explosive move up. And then another explosive move up there. Now we can also go over here and we can see that same thing again this is very similar to what we've seen right now 
break outside of the channel that it was generally traveling in. Steep, sharp, correct sell-off. Fell even outside of it for a very brief moment. Only a wick, but I mean the candle body is kind of on and off there. And then it just traveled sideways for a while before it made its next move up. So these are all ones that I've done inside bull markets. This isn't even the bearish trend ones. Now let's have a look at this one. Broke out, fell down, got up to the top, kind of dropped down and then traveled sideways for months before reaching the bottom. Up, a lot of sideways movement, but again broke out to the uh, low side, broke to the low side, broke, broke to the low side. So these kind of patterns have happened, have happened numerous times in Bitcoin. These are not sort of unheard of. And again, this is the average kind of uh, pattern. You can see it broke way to the downside. And that would have scared everyone, really shocked everyone. There would have been a lot of panic selling. But then it got back up in its channel and continued on. And then again, these are in bull cycles. So eventually these channels get broken and you get these parabolic moves before you get the sort of blow off top and it drops down. Now, when you get the blow off tops, they're pretty steep and they're very... Uh, erratic whereas the one that we've got now we're traveling sideways again you just drop off a fake out drop off a fake out drop off uh, and again a bit of a fake out before you then really go into you know that long consolidation period of you know trying to get to the bottom so for me uh, again I'm just not panicking and again I'll get back to uh, the pattern that we're in For me, I don't see any reason to panic at the moment. As long as we stay in this channel, I'm not too concerned. And we are within that channel. And again, even if we break to the low side and you know maybe there's a wick down here or we get outside and travel just out uh, under this for a while, as long as we're still in a general uptrend, and again, we're not breaking down lower than 20,000 and then you know breaking down lower than 12,000, that's a worry. That's a bear trend, but at the moment, we're still in there. All right. Anyway, I've been over this a number of times, and, you know, I go over it pretty much every day, uh, and it's more for my own benefit uh, than uh, simply everyone else's as well. Just to remind myself that, yes, we're in a downtrend at the moment, but we are still in an overall bull market. And until we break outside of this, and then again, really start to break some uh, resistance levels like 20,000, then I don't think that we are in a bear market. But don't get me wrong, if we drop below 27,000, uh, and again, daily closes, not just random wicks, wicks can go down lower, that won't change much. But as long as we're staying in this uptrend, and even if we don't, if we just simply consolidate and go sideways for a long time, then I'm not worried. All right, so what I want to do is have a look at, you know, in the crypto space, there's a lot of, you know, sort of different areas, you know, supply chains and all sorts of things like that that you can invest in. Uh, where are some of the areas that I've really sort of, you know, I won't say heavily invested in because I've heavily invested in Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum and sort of Chainlink. Uh, they're, you know, my biggest kind of holds. Uh, but DeFi, I've definitely invested in DeFi. So again, I built myself a position in Uniswap early on, sort of doubled my money, got out with this big dip. Uh, I've got back in and I've basically got uh, all my Uniswap that I originally sold back. I think I've even got some extra. Uh, and I bought it at a pretty good price. I haven't made you know much money on uh, any of the coins that I've bought recently. They've been traveling sideways. But pretty much every coin I bought was anywhere from 2 to 3x lower than what than its old all-time high so for me i think they're all going to make those uh, old all-time highs again and continue to go on in this bull run long term like years from now a uh, different story i don't know like i said i do plan to sell pretty much half of my crypto except for my bitcoin i won't sell half of that i'll only sell you know i'll have to work it out i'll sell some but not a whole lot and same with ethereum uh, I won't sell half of that uh, and Chainlink I won't sell half of that but outside of really those I'll sell half of pretty much everything but it'll be staggered it'll be on the way up I'm not going to try and time the market perfectly and wait for the day before the blow off top because I can guarantee you I'll get it wrong but anyway moving on DeFi so Uniswap, Chainlink, Aave 
Now look, they've some pretty good gains now, but they're way off their old all-time highs. So again, Terra Luna, this is only showing the seven days. I wish we had something that shoe showed uh, like 14 days uh, and 30 days. So that would really give you a good uh, idea. So, whoops, sorry. Synthetics Network Token, it's still down 20%, so $11. I'm a massive Synthetics Network fan, uh, and that is something I am quite happy to buy at these prices. And I'll continue to buy it if it goes down a little bit lower. The graph, I mean, look, these are areas that I've invested in. And look, I'll go and show you. Uh, investor in Uniswap, investor in Chainlink, investor in Aave. Again, this was nearly $700, so it's still nearly... 50% off, not quite, I think it was 640, 650, something like that was its uh, all time high, so this is not too far off at all. Uh, Terra, uh, bought some Terra. Uh, synthetics, got some synthetics, uh, got some graph. I am thinking about getting some uh, Bancor, just have to make my mind up. Uh, what else have we got? Ren, definitely got some Ren. So there's a number of good projects in there, and this is where I think. Crypto is going to make the biggest impact in DeFi. I really think that's where it is. And again, it's, it's a shame at the moment, but most of these DeFi projects are still about 50% from their old all-time highs, if not even more. So again, you need to make your mind up about whether you think, you know, we are in a bear market and things are going to get worse uh, and what your plan is. Are you selling out and trying to buy lower or are you seeing this as a massive buying opportunity like I did? And again, that's not financial advice. And I just bought all the coins that I kind of missed uh, all the pumps on last time and that I think have long-term fundamental growth. I think Aave is going to be here long-term. I think Chainlink is going to be here long-term. I think Synthetic is going to be here long-term. But does that mean I'm right? Absolutely not. I could be completely wrong. Hence why I plan on selling half of them. And look, if I get it wrong and they continue to go to the moon, then I've got my moon bags left. Anyway, I've still got half of them, but I will have hopefully made some pretty good gains by the end of it. All right, and last but not least, NFTs. So again, I've spoken about this a number of times. I'm not talking about the NFTs themselves, but the NFT space. So the platforms that these things are being built on, that's what I'm more bullish on. You need to be... You know, either lucky or just really understand art to buy an actual NFT itself and do really, really well. I'm generally not that lucky. It's not that I don't have any luck. I definitely do. But, uh, you know, when it comes to kind of art stuff, I just most likely buy crap. For, for me, any NFTs that I may buy, they're sentimental value only. But the platforms that they're being built on, that's a different story. I don't have any Theta Network. Again, I didn't have enough money to buy everything. I may still look to build a position in Theta Network. Uh, I built myself a position in Chili's. I have a position in Engine Coin. Uh, Audius, I've built my position in that. Now, unfortunately, uh, I didn't buy anywhere near the lows at the moment. It, can, it continued to go down. I'm at nearly a, oh God, I think a 50% loss. I thought I bought at a good price and it went lower. But look, in the end, I don't care. I just want exposure to the space. Uh, and I like Audius or slash audio, what they're doing. Uh, and what's the other one? Super Farm here. Super Farm. So same thing with Super Farm. I didn't buy at the bottom. I'm at a loss at the moment. But I just want to have exposure to the space. And I really like what uh, Elio Trade uh, I like his channel in general, and I like what he's doing with Super Farm. So these are the spaces that I've really focused on outside of and we'll go back to here, you know, the big main ones. So I've got a position in Bitcoin, so layer one type stuff. I have a position in Ethereum. I have a position in Cardano. I have a position in Polkadot uh, and uh, Atom also. I have a position in Atom. They are ones, you know, they're layer ones that I'm really sort of bullish on. And again, I've got, you know, some layer two stuff with uh, Polygon and things like that. All right, so it's a pretty quick video. There's not a whole lot going on. You know, the, the bloody Sunday that everyone was talking about hasn't eventuated yet, but when we go over here, I mean, it's pretty close. So it's, you know, nearly midnight over there. So, you know, the Sunday uh, part is probably unlikely to happen, but maybe it's going to be Monday if it's going to happen at all. Or maybe we did find the bottom, because as you can see, we've had a couple of sort of lower lows 
but they really aren't dropping below that 34,000. That is really where it just seems to be holding tight at the moment and people are happy to buy. Now we'll have to wait and see over the next sort of few days, weeks and all the rest of it, whether we start to do something like this where we just slowly track along with the bottom of this channel before we then make another big move up and you know, how high does it go? Anyone's guess. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. There were a couple of gains to be made. Uh, and if you weren't, you know, my personal advice is hopefully you're in good projects and just hold, but I can't offer you any financial advice. You've got to do what's right for you. All right, I'll see you next time.